Hi, kids, and welcome to another exciting episode of Creature Feature, your favorite nature show in Nebraska. <laughs> We've got a really dandy movie for you tonight, and our special feature this evening is we're here with our pals AJ and Jim Duffy from the Nebraska Herpetological Society. And Jim, why don't you tell us why you're here today? Well, we're here today. We're here to talk about the Reptile Breeders Expo. It's Sunday, October 4th at Ramada Plaza Convention Center. That's 3321 South 72nd Street. We have captive bred reptiles and amphibians. And we'll also have spiders, insects, scorpions, etc. We'll have supplies. Uh, for your reptiles, amphibians, uh, feeder rats and mice, whatever it is you need for your reptiles. What's up, Mr. Sanitary, sir? Look <laughs> what I have. Well, that that looks like it's it's a steak. Yeah, it reminds me of my ex-boyfriend, though. Yeah, uh, why is that? Was your ex-boyfriend all slimy and stuff? <laughs> No, because he ate rodents. Get, get you and your snake out of here. Listen, kids, if you are curious about reptiles and amphibians and big giant insects, the Reptile Breeders Expo is a really fun place to go and check out because you're going to see a lot of breeders there and folks who've got the 411 on all these critters. You might find somebody new there to bring into your home and have as a family member. Now, I've been there a couple of times there with uh, uh, Jim and the boys, and we've had a really dandy time, and we're looking forward to this, this next show, which is Sunday, October 4th. So we're going to be taking a little walk here around uh, the University of Nebraska here in Lincoln and uh, visiting some other folks and, and seeing some critters. So I hope you have some fun with us tonight. So without further ado, Igor, why don't you roll that movie, and we'll be back in just a little bit. Hi kids and welcome back. I sure hope you're enjoying the piece of garbage that we're running for you tonight. <laughs> well, we're here at the University of Nebraska in Lincoln and we're in a special place here. I want to introduce a pal of ours. This is Professor Ferraro and he's one of the her herpetologists. Is that how you say it? Yes, I'm the only herpetologist here he for you and now. Oh. All right, well, why don't you tell the folks a little bit about where we are, what you do, and what folks can learn here. Okay. At you and now, we have a whole building dedicated to research for all types of animals in our wildlife major, um, which is very popular. We have over 200 undergrads in our wildlife major, and one of the things they study is herpetology, which is the study of amphibians, frogs and toads and salamanders, the study of lizards, turtles, and snakes. And in some of our labs, we have all the native snakes of Nebraska. Wow. Just for you to look at. Now, how many uh, native species are there to Nebraska? 63, if you count all the amphibians, lizards, turtles, frogs and toads, and snakes. Now, are any of them on the endangered list? Yes, we have in what we call tier one species. Hmm. We have two snakes on the tier one species, a turtle and a lizard on our tier one species. That's state endangered. Okay, and are those just from mankind encroaching on their habitats, or...? How does that work? It's pretty much habitat destruction, habitat change is the main reason. One of them we're, that's uh, diminishing right now in the eastern part of the state is our, a salamander. And I have five research students working on uh, bar tiger salamander decline in Nebraska. So it's one of our big projects here. So not only do we teach undergrads and have pending projects, we also work with uh, graduate students as well. Now this room that we're in here, this is where you keep all the, the native species? Native species of snakes are in this room, right. Okay, and uh, what would you say is, are some of your prize, prized uh, critters in here? They all are. It's like asking, that's like asking a parent, who's your favorite child? Um, <laughs> actually, the endangered ones um, that are very hard to find, the smooth green snake, 
uh, Tantilla nigriceps, the blackhead snake, both of them are underground behind you, um, are some of the rare ones that are extremely hard to find in the state. We have Graham's crayfish snake down below that only eats crayfish when they come out of their exoskeleton. Wow. It's a very specialized feeder. And we have a pair down there that are doing very well. Very interesting. Now, uh, is it the, the students and the staff, you guys go out into the field and you, you're obviously you're looking for right. native species or possibly even new ones. Right. What we're doing is qualifying if there is a decline. And the way to do that, we need what we call baseline. How many are here now? And we don't have a good handle on that in Nebraska. So we're kind of mm. constantly found what we call range extensions. And so all summer, my students are working out in the field, gathering data, and then we do some experimental items here. All righty. Now, aside from uh, uh, the working reptiles and do a curriculum and stuff like that, you guys are involved with other things? Oh, yeah. We have, you name it, we have ornithologists working on all types of birds. We have mammalogists working on bats. And so we have a full faculty of, you know, ichthyologists and fisheries people, so we work on every end we can think of, and so, class, classes on all of them. Now, if you're a, a kid in high school and you, you know, you're looking out to see what your next career might be, what are, what are some of the career fields that somebody who studies animals can go into sure. around here? Most of our students uh, work, can work for zoos in zoological parks. They can work for uh, national uh, wildlife uh, agencies, mm -hmm. state wildlife agencies like Nebraska Game Parks Commission. Uh, they can also work um, in other countries. I have a student working in Costa Rica with sea turtles. I have wow. a student working in India with a type of um, crocodile called a gharial conservation. And we have students, uh, students in here in the other room right now, she spent the whole summer in Africa. And we have a student here who's studying uh, uh, lions in Africa. He's doing his PhD on lions in Africa. And he's there all summer, but right now he tracks his lions on his computer because they all have a GPS collar. <laughs> so every day he looks and sees where his lions are. So does that mean you have to make little GPSs for all the snakes here? Actually, we do have little GPSs for the snakes. They actually have to be implanted in their body. Really? Yeah, because they can't wear a collar. They come right out of it. Well, you just killed my joke then. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right, why don't we take a look at a couple of the critters that are here in this room, and uh, we'll have the, the professor here just tell you a couple of fun facts. Professor, can you tell us about the snake? Sure. This is actually a common bull snake, the most common snake across Nebraska, except it has a mutation called albinism. This one was found in Madison County, Nebraska. It is a female. All bull snakes have a pointed nose, the only snake in Nebraska that can dig its own hole. It's the largest snake, growing eight and a half foot. You can feel how strong it is. It can actually wrap around small rats, gophers, and mice. So tell me about this guy. This is an eastern hognose. This is auditory frog and toad eater. Pretty much all he eats is frogs and toads. But what it does when it gets scared, it flattens its head out like a cobra, like that. And then it hisses at you. But in the wild, when it's scared and flattens its head out and hissing at you, when you go to grab them, what they do is they roll over and play dead and throw up. Nurse Ginger scared. <laughs> ah! That seems kind of like an angry fellow. How about actually, you tell us about him? Actually, it's just defensive. It's scared. This is our really our only water snake in the state of Nebraska. People mistakenly think we have water moccasins and cotton mouths in Nebraska. No. All we have is this, what we call the common or northern water snake. It's in all our waterways, it can be pure black, yeah, it has kind of a widest mouth, and it goes after dead, dying fish. So if you're fishing, it'll come up to the boat or up to your dock and want that dead, dying fish. So people think they're being chased, but it just wants a meal. He looks hungry. You smell fishy. Hi kids, it's uh, Larry the Wolfman, and I hope you're really enjoying Doc's crappy movie. <laughs> I am actually. So we're in a room here with uh, Dr. Ferrero. What room are we in, dude? This is our procedure room at the Herp Lab. Ugh. This is where we do operations. Oh, like the little thing with. Yeah, we can take that hair out if you really want to. Uh, we're just, not. We're, we're used to. We're used to working with skin, but not. I, not. I just got it perfect. Oh, uh, okay. Well, in here we're looking at in uh, uh, what we call not endangered yet, but declining. Uh, 
tiger salamanders in Nebraska. The western barred tiger salamander it seems to be disappearing from the eastern part of the state. And so we're growing them up from eggs that we obtained from west of the eastern part of the state, but still in the state. And we're trying to see why they're disappearing. And here we have the larval form of the barred tiger salamander, and here we have some younger ones. So we have several students working on these projects trying to figure out um, how, why these things are occurring. And all our students work on projects where we have to get the money for it, because the university just pays me to teach. So we have to find people to donate money. So everybody's welcome to go to my web website and donate money to do our research on conservation of salamanders. Um, but right now we're doing a lot of conservation of salamanders. We have over 100 here we're working with, looking at what's affecting them. Is it pH in the soil? Is it acid rain? What is it? We don't know. We'll find out. That's our job. Awesome, dude. And now we're going to go back to the movie. Igor, roll it, brother. Ooh, ooh, ooh. What is that, Professor? This is an American alligator, only two years old. Are alligators indigenous to Nebraska? No, they're not indigenous to Nebraska. They're indigenous to the southeast United States. Okay. But occasionally people get them on the internet and let them go in lakes around Nebraska. So when you're out swimming, so professor, can you tell me a little bit about this alligator? Sure, we have this alligator because we teach with it. Uh, students at the University of Nebraska Lincoln, when they take herpetology, not only learn about the snakes and reptiles of Nebraska, we make it so they can go worldwide and work. So our students get to hold and look at baby alligators, but also um, different alligators like uh, big ones. We bring in an eight foot alligator, we bring in a six foot alligator, and we allow them to learn how to ch check their gender, flush their stomachs, and look at different parts of their body to save them out in the wild. So our students learn jobs that they can use all over the world. Why do you need to flush those stomachs? To get the human parts out to see who they ate. So what happens to the alligators when they aren't a baby anymore, when they get too big? Well, when they get bigger, it'll go back to where the parents were and the ones we use, and that's one of the zoos in the state. Um, and so we just borrow them from the zoo, and the zoo had a bunch of extras, and so we got this baby from the zoo. So they all go back to zoos. Well, boys and girls, we're just about done, and I think we've had a really fun and educational show here today at the University of Nebraska in Lincoln. And I want to thank our special pal, Professor Ferraro, for showing us all the critters and telling us all about what they do here. Before we go, I want to talk to our friend Glenn here from the Nebraska Herpetological Society. And could you tell us a little bit about the, uh, the show that's going on here on Sunday, October 4th, and how that came to be? Well, in 1993, we had our first show, and all the money that we generate from the show, we donate to the Nebraska Herpetological Society. And it's been a tradition uh, ever since then, twice a year. We have one in the spring and one in the fall. And uh, thousands of people show up. We bring the best of the best uh, breeders to Omaha to uh, sell their baby snakes, lizards, spiders, frogs, whatever they have directly to the public. Well, we've been there a couple of times and we have a lot of fun. And as I've said before, if you're thinking about, you know, adding a new member to your family that might happen to be a reptile or amphibian, this breeder show is the place to go. And the folks there are very knowledgeable. And you bring the kids on in and check out all the little critters there and have a lot of fun. So before we go, I want to thank our, our friends uh, from the, the Nebraska Repetological Society for letting us uh, stop by here today at the University of Nebraska in Lincoln and we will see you all next week for some more fun and another really crappy movie. So here's Doc Sanguinary and the Creature Feature Free signing off and see you again next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.